Okay, in our previous video, uh, we looked at how to get it so that the computer uh, can check for a win. Uh, we looked at the first method, which was just a pile of uh, if statements. Um, and then we looked at a different method, which used fewer if statements and a loop. Okay, if you're not sure how that works, you know, please go back and, and look at that video. I think that was called Optimization 1. Um, but today what we want to do is we want to look at a um, totally different way of doing it. Uh, which makes the code even shorter. Okay, so I'm going to delete all that. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to just basically, instead of checking column by column or row by row for a win, we're just going to check basically the whole board uh, in, a di in a slightly different way. So I'm going to say call this check for a win. Oops. Check for a win. Okay. So let's take a look at our board. Okay, so here we have our board. There are, of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine possible squares. Um, now, of course, some of them are occupied, so we can't choose those. Okay? So what we want to do is basically we just want to iterate, which means go step by step through each one. And I want to go step by step and check and see if there's a winner. Okay, so basically, let's start out. Um, start out with one. Uh, well, the first thing we need to check is, is one empty? So if one is empty, if so in this case one is not empty, I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to go back and then go to two. Okay. So let's go to two. Now two, is two empty? Yes. Okay. So if it's empty, I'm going to put my player's you know, ID, code, whatever, in there. Then what I got to do is check and see if he's a winner. Okay, so is this a winner? Of course, the answer is no. And I need to make sure I need to delete that and then go to the next one. Okay, is that a winner? No. So I'm going to delete that and go back. Is that a winner? Yes. So if that's the winner, I'm going to return whatever number I was on because I can stop there because my main goal is to win. So how do we program that? So let's go back to our code. So we've got our board. So I can say for i, and we'll use i for our index, in range 1, 10, oops. for the bell. Okay. So again, we said, so first we have to check and see if the board at i is a space. That means it's free. And we say board i equals player. Then we need to check and see, well, is that board a winner? Okay, so if we go up to here, we have a function that does that. So we can use this function inside of this function. So, so if is winner board player. Okay, so the board is so the board has now been changed, actually. Board player. If it's a winner, return i. Then we're done. If it's a winner, we have done our job. We're going to return i. Else, if it's not a winner, okay, as we said before, if it's not a winner. So in the case of two, if it's not a winner. I need to make that a space again. So, because I've changed the board. So, if I'm going to go back to my code, board i equals space. That's pretty much it. Okay, so let's give that a shot. Let's run it and see what happens. Um, let me show how many errors. Okay, so I'm going to choose an empty space for x, 5. Okay, there's an error. 
Yeah. I in range. Let's use this parentheses. Thought that was the case. Let's try that again. We'll go seven. Eight. Okay. I'm gonna go one. And if the code's working, it will find that this is a an empty space and it's a win. O wins, congratulations. Okay, so it did work, uh, which was quite nice. So as you can see, we didn't really need to check every single column and every single possibility. Is this an O and an O, or is this an O and an O? And so we took all those lines of just individual codes and even the ones we optimized with the loop, we just replaced it with a little smart thinking. Okay, so pop it in, check, is it a winner? Nope, pop it out. Pop it in, is it a winner? Nope, pop it out. Pop it in, is it a winner? Yes, return the value. And that is all. But uh, actually, on a side note, uh, now we could take this same code and use it to check for a block. Uh, but I'll leave that up to you because that's a bit more complicated, but we can use the same concept. Maybe that's another lesson for you.